uh, Serbians say, you know, Kopeva's law nemisli, which means basically those who sing know no evil, which is, uh, it's a sense of being, it's a sense of being free and open. four people in my immediate family, my parents, my sister and I. But we were reared very much as brothers and sisters with our cousins. Uh, we got together a lot. Uh, we all did things together. We had picnics together. We, we celebrated holidays together. We did a lot of things together. And so that we had an intimate relationship with a lot of your relatives and you wanted very much to be a part of that completely. After all, when they first came here, they, you know, their lives weren't the greatest. Uh, they lived not in the best neighborhoods, and they worked terribly hard uh, under absolutely abominable conditions. And they couldn't have achieved it without those songs and without that, that great allegiance to music they had. It's a really good feeling to be able to sing like that the shirt you can be carried away you know you can just be carried away you don't have to care about a goddamn thing for two minutes in your life and that's a fantastic feeling as much relief as singing gives me in 1976 I can only imagine how much relief it gave my grandfather in 1914 when he came home working in a mine 12 14 hours a day When a whole culture, as I've talked about it, is, is rooted in, in, uh, in its passion for family life and its passion for music, and suddenly you get a family that is both family and musicians, then you have something that, that is coincidentally very, very powerful to the people who, you know, who take it in. The celebration of the golden anniversary of the famous Popish Brothers Tamritsa Orchestra. There are nearly 1,200 of us here today, many of you coming from distant parts of the United States to honor Eli, Adam, Teddy, Mike, and we can't forget our beloved Pete Mistovich, who's really stuck with the boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Popovich Brothers. tremendous Serbian outpouring of love to those men who have kept the spirit of Serbian music in the forefront in these United States 
these many, many years. se bolan rozbolio sari klonas ruku prelomio enrega to de da ga zapjevamo vo 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 Pete Mistovich, I join with Bill Salatich and your many friends in extending congratulations and best wishes. Signed, Gerald R. Ford, President. <laughs> Marco was an iron worker all his life. But when he was playing his prima, you know, he was a whole different person than at any other time, at, at any other moment that you could know him. He was a person who was, who was inside you when he did that, making you happy, sort of from the inside out. And not many people get inside you. <laughs> Very few get past the door for most people.
good man, a good husband, a good father, and a good grandfather. His home and its warmth was a Serbian home. Who taught our Serbian youth more about our Serbian history through songs than the songs we learned so much from them and Brother Marco, who played it so well? How many church, cola, choir, club leaders literally had their batteries recharged emotionally after being with the Popoviches and hearing him play <coughs> even for one night? He and his brothers were really the Serbian drummer boys on this continent. They were and they are, and they shall be, really the Serbian feeling. I'm Ted Popovich. I have a wife, her name is Mildred. I have three daughters. I'll go the names, Natalie, Doreen, and Danella. Natalie's married, has a boy and a girl, a boy about 19, a daughter about 17. Doreen is not married. And Danella, she's the youngest, she's married and has a boy and a girl, one is five and one is one year old. And I live at 11110 Avenue E, in the southeast side of Chicago. For my livelihood, I drive a beer truck, and up until a few months ago, I had a sideline of playing in an orchestra called the Puppage Brothers. And I've been doing that for about 52 years. And, uh, I've enjoyed it all my life. All of the work that is involved and the entertaining and, and the enjoyment that is brought to other people. And I brought up my children to believe in the songs and the tradition of the Serbian people. And now that their children are growing up, they are doing the same thing. In fact, my youngest grandchildren, the both of them, the one that's five and the one that's six. I was playing a record for her today of a song, of a record that we were just making now. It's going to be our sixth one. And there's a song in there that goes uh, something about Nicola. And uh, right away she says, oh, Deda, you singing that song for me, aren't you? Because her name is Nicole. And uh, she really got a thrill out of it. She was dancing around the living room there and and my grandson, he's only a year old, he just stands in one place and bobs up and down as soon as he hears the music. And he keeps hollering, dead up, dead up, dead up, as he recognizes my voice in the record. It's a feeling that uh, is inherent from my uh, childhood. When we were small, they taught us to talk. Uh, we knew how to talk Serbian before we went to school. You know, I'd write, read and write Serbian before we went to kindergarten. We could write our names, the Chirilica. And the miners, as hard as they worked every day, every time they came home, we had boarders, we had kumobi and everything else. The house was full every night, and every night after supper, as tired as they were, they sang. And we sang right along with them. came to this country very young. I think he came here in 1902, and uh, he never went to school in Europe. He went to Germany for a while and worked and made enough money with his oldest brother to uh, come to America. He wanted to come to America. He, I think he first came into Pittsburgh and then got a job with the railroad. To uh, He was shipped out west into either tunnels. He's worked in tunnels on the Moffat Tunnel somewhere up in South Dakota or North Dakota. And uh, he worked in copper mines, coal mines, silver mines, all through the years. And then as we grew older, and after he had all of our us children, which he had up until about 1925, I think, there was eight of us. And then we lost one. 
And then there was, uh, in a few more years, we had a couple more, and then there was ten of us. There was five sisters and five brothers. We used to sit on a porch in Colorado after work on the street. And all the kids in the neighborhood uh, would sit all over the fence, along over the grass, and we just play how far into the night. Playing marches, playing waltzes, playing songs. So tambura, to me, is a very close thing associated with the expression of the song from the heart. My mother's always insisting us to do something better with the instruments. She loved to teach uh, us kids to sing songs, and she loved the music herself, and she thought that the world and the people that are in uh, America, of the Serbian and Croatian people that are in America, that never heard Tamara for many years, if we would travel through the West, we would get a chance, they would get a chance to hear the music they haven't seen or heard probably since they left Europe. My mother had a saying that I always said, hold on to your own, but respect that which is others. And that's an old Serbian saying, is meaning respect. We went through the whole West. We went through Colorado. We went into Wyoming. Then we went into Nevada. And from Nevada, we went down into California. From California, we went up the coast through Oregon and Washington and back into Idaho and down back through Montana. So after we came home, my mother says, well, now you just travel through the West now go east, she says. That's where all the Serbian people are, she said. And uh, try to do something for yourself there, because she was always after us to better ourselves in one way or another, you know. And she thought the music would give us a start. So when we came to Chicago, we found out that Chicago in this area was centrally located close to Milwaukee, close to South Bend, where there were Serbian colonies. And uh, we stayed here. My mother and father, we sent for them and told them that there was jobs here. If we couldn't get a job here in Chicago, we couldn't get one nowhere. So I went in the steel mill as a laborer. And uh, my brother Eli and Adam, they started off, I think, at uh, U.S. Steel as painters, you know, painting bridges and stuff like that. And our first playing was job was in 1929 in November the 8th, I think, when the Serbians built a new church in Joliet and they dedicated it that day and that was our first playing job. And from then on, we, we were booked quite solidly, weekends all the time. about as much about the future of the Puffridge Brothers right now as I do. I know uh, Ted's whole life has been singing and it would be a big tragedy if he uh, just had to stop singing just like that. So I imagine we will try to do something, but what? I still don't know. There's not a primash that can uh, stand in Mike's shoes for playing them. There's not a primash with a voice like his who could stand in for the singing. So you see, that's a almost a triple jeopardy. Uh, you know, when Marco died, it was a big jolt to all of us. And, uh, and my brother Adam, we, he couldn't see coming back so soon, but this year concert, we had committed ourselves to doing it with the Milwaukee group. And uh, he uh, wrote all the music from a record that he had of this Albanska Globe, but all this in within this, what is it now, three weeks? 
And he's worked day and night with the choir. He's had us rehearsing, and he's just tightened his beat right now. In fact, he said he's got stomach trouble already. So much. Uh... Tell him, you got to be over here. Can you still be able to get that in there, won't you? That's it. He throws around there that way. And I got to get him over here, too, you see? better than me, right? <laughs> All right, once again. That's all. You guys aren't that tired? Oh. If I should get a cramp up there and my hand sticks there, you guys have got to hold it. That's what it's all about. In my generation, it was uh, very hard to tell a person what you feel in this in this song or something. But it is a little bit harder now. It's, I say that they hear that many American songs, more than 100 to 1, you are listening to rock and music and do different kinds of music all day long. And the kids come down only once a week. And it's still, it's a, it's a magnificent thing that they're doing that. playing the tumble apart there, but let me hear you girls now, let me hear some soul girls. Okay. reason down in my father's house. Teddy is another reason. My grandchildren are another reason. Whether whether they come in the choir or not, she tells me your son doesn't have an ear, which is a disappointing me, but that's a thing of nature, and I don't know whether it's true or not. But those are the reasons, the friends and the relatives. And if it weren't for them, you know, darn well, I wouldn't have come back for this concert either, because... Uh, well, don't ask me any more about that. Milwaukee, since they're in conjunction with the uh, program, is singing with us. So this is how we meet everybody all over the country. And um, 
I have people doing this and people doing that, and I have to figure out how much I think I need. And like, this is guesswork too. You think you're going to have 150 people? I might have 100. And uh, this weekend, we're ha you know Milwaukee choirs our guests, and of course, many of our members are housing these people, and they have work at home too. But still, in all the members' kitchen, then we ask friends of the choir. But it's usually mostly choir members. Georgina, you're our housing chairman. All the housing taken care of. behind our back, four people went off the list without even telling us, which is bad. And there was, I mean, uh, within the four, there was 12 guests involved. So that means, you know, we have to find room for another 12, and uh, keep passing that list Tuesday after Tuesday, Thursday after Thursday, hoping that you get more on that list. But I think everything will work out all right. things about being a choir was going on trips. Everybody would get on the bus together, travel to another city like Cincinnati or Kansas City, and you'd get there and you'd have breakfast with the people and then you'd go and they'd, they'd take you into their homes and then you'd, uh, you'd, you'd dance colors with them and you'd go to church with them and you'd rehearse with them and then you'd sing together and that pulled the whole thing together. performances prepared in tribute to America's bicentennial celebration.
You know, although there have been times when our people weren't treated so well in this country, they've always been grateful for America because nobody in this country ever told Serbians, you can't sing Serbian songs. And for that, they're grateful. again. Thank you, singers. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Mr. Musio. Thank you, Miss Wallace. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
so deep. But you play either. I think you should disband. are so different now than they were then. And you have to make some choices. I couldn't exist in Chicago or Detroit or Pittsburgh doing the kind of work I do, which is political consulting, media consulting, mostly with political candidates and, candidates and public interest groups. 
Well, Boston's a highly politicized place and not too far from Washington, and, and you can survive doing that in Boston. So here you are between two worlds. You know, you're, you're between sort of an ancient culture and a very contemporary one. And I think it causes, it, I know it causes me to live in a kind of cultural schizophrenia, you know. Uh, younger kids because tennis is an up-and-coming sport just like soccer now they started a soccer tournament what, about three or four years ago and each year they get a new team and a new team but it's something in the summer I think it's more or less like an interlude between get together like after the golf tournament and the next one is the bowling tournament so there's something in between that can uh, yeah, really, it's, it's an excuse. Really it's an excuse to party. Right. <laughs> it, really it doesn't matter if you have a, mar a marble to tournament. Somewhere. You're going to get servers to come. That's right. I agree. <laughs> you know, everything is supposed to be taken serious in sports. But here, basketball is the same thing. You have musicians on the basketball court or on a bowling alley. Because Why? you and pe Serbians People enjoy it. Serbians have to hear music. Serbians have to hear music all the time. It's in their blood. Probably it. It's in their blood. You know, if you were to come out here and play tennis all day, say, you know, you were in the tournament and you'd say, uh, where is the orchestra? That, that's the comment. That's you know, what you're looking forward. When is the orchestra forward. coming? You're looking forward to having it's a drink in your hand. It's the core of the whole thing. That's the core of the whole thing. Your bar, your orchestra, and the people around it with the drink in their hand. It's just a very social thing. It's uh, the music just makes it. be Hayden. Actually, Leslie, but I never use Leslie. I'm married to Bato. We've, we'll be married five years, September 25th, and we have a little boy, Milan, who's named after my father, and he's two and a half. And we live in Dalton. We have a house. We've been there now about a year and a half. And I'm a substitute teacher in the Chicago Public Schools, and I'm also a mother, and I'm a wife. I'm a wife and a mother first, and then I'm a substitute teacher. How did we meet? <laughs> well, the first time I met Yubi was in Milwaukee at the basketball tournament. My buddy was telling me about these girls from Chicago. And I said, okay. So we went to the basketball tournament that year in Milwaukee, and he introduced me to you. But that was the first time I met her. But 64. Go ahead, say why you didn't, why you weren't a few. Go ahead. So, yeah, she was beautiful, but she had heavy legs, huh? <laughs> I'm a leg man. He always tells me that. He always tells me that. And I'm a leg man. So, you know, right away, that didn't start the program off too good. Well, I always thought of him as being one of the most sincere people that I ever knew. There was nothing phony about him. And he was very Serbian. He felt the same things that I did. He felt the same things about dancing, about singing, about uh, when you have a family, how you want to bring your family up, what you want them to be exposed to. And I, that's, what I, that's, I think, the, the main attraction. The first thing that I, I said, Bato, you know, we have so much in common in our feelings about things. And that, that was it, really, because it's so much of our life. It's always been a part of, of my life. I know when I was a little girl, at school they would say, what are you? I would never say anything, but I'm Serbian. And, Later on, I heard, well, you're supposed to say you're American first, but it was never like that with me. I was always a Serbian-American, although I don't speak Serbian, and I can't read Serbian. I understand it. That, and then there was kola dancing. We had a kola group. 
and choir, of course, choir. I was in junior choir and then Sloboda. Boy, when you turned 16 and could join Sloboda, that was the thing. Why? I, I, I don't know, just the joy of singing, I would imagine it was part of that. Of course, when you're 16, it was taking trips and getting to meet Serbian boys in other communities, you know, that was the big deal. But singing was the most part, getting a Serbian costume and being able to stand with the big Sloboda instead of singing with the junior choir all the time. That was a big part of it. And that's why I think it's so much of our lives, because uh, it's always been. And then there was our house, and, and being that my parents and, and our family lived with Deda, everything was focused on our house. When the family came, they came to our house. And when it was Slav, it was at our house. And it was just uh, an everyday thing. in that house that could never be duplicated. I don't know why. I, it's a very hard thing to answer. Um, maybe there are new ways. But there's a feeling in that house. I don't know. I think that my children get a lot out of living with my father. It was easy to get along with. He never bothered, he never interfered. He had a beautiful sense of humor. I probably didn't know it at that time, but I think we were drawing from him all the time. I think he made us all strong. And I don't know if we knew that was happening. It was kind of... Um, He just kept things together. He kept an unseen hand always kind of pulling it in, you know, keeping it moving. We lived a very sheltered life. We lived on an island. I think sometimes I look at us, we still do, because we're different. And I guess it all goes back to the church and, and the heritage. It's all tied into that island. I'm sure it's changed. But um, I think that the kids, they still carry out with traditions we always had when we were kids. I think they're richer for it. I think if they weren't, they would have drafted. And so far, it's, uh, it's been holding pretty good. Slava is a very personal holiday. It's your holiday and your family's holiday, and you celebrate it with your family in a very holiday atmosphere. 
it's probably descended from the totems and tribal rites, but it is preserved through all those years, and therefore it is all the more personal, and its customs are personal, um, shared customs among the family. In honor and commemoration of St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker, we offer, O Lord, this offering, beseeching that it be acceptable upon thy most heavenly altar. In commemoration of St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker, we offer, O Lord, this offering, beseeching that it be acceptable unto thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christos mostred in us, yes, the Buddha. Christ is amongst us, he is and shall remain forever. Amen. Christos mostred in us, yes, the Buddha, for the Eki Amen. Christos mostred in us, yes, the Buddha. Christ is amongst us, he is and shall remain. Christos mostred in us, yes, the Buddha, for the Eki Amen. they should lose it, that will not be the biggest breaking point in my life. I am not living because for Serbianism only. It's, it's a part of my life, and while I'm living, it's going to be a part of my life until I'm gone. And if somewhere along the line it doesn't catch, there's no reason to panic about that. It's happened. The service had been economically integrated uh, into, the, into the American mainstream. Bill Solitich is the president of Gillette North America. You know, uh, there have been Serbian baseball players, uh, Pete Maravich is a Serbian. You know, they're as integrated as a small ethnic group can be into American life. I don't know if it's going to go, 
about 20 years ago, people were saying it was going to be gone by now, and I don't see that happening. It'll just change. And it has changed. And it'll change some more. But it's here. Yeah, 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 yeah